you guys welcome back to my channel today i am filming a designer shoe collection video i know it sounds a bit obnoxious but I'm really not trying to be i think that shoes are the first place to invest when it comes to fashion i think that they generally will withstand time more than clothing will bags might have a bit of an upper hand on them shoes are my favorite place to splurge so yeah i honestly don't even have that many this is pretty much my entire shoe collection besides a pair of Nike Air Force Ones and a pair of vintage boots that I have completely beat up and may have to be trashed. I can honestly say that I absolutely love all of these shoes and I think most of them will be in my collection for a while. But with that being said, I thought I would briefly touch on the topic of when fashion and spending on luxury goods is an investment and when it's not. So with shoes, sadly, they are not the best investment if you're actually going to be wearing them. When they start getting gross on the bottom, let me show you a pair as an example. Like I just got these a month ago. I live in New York City. I stomp around on the streets. They get like this on the bottom and when they start to get like this, they start to lose quite a lot of their value. When it's a limited edition shoe that was highly sought after, you can probably still get the entire amount that you purchased the shoe for back when you resell. I also get some questions like, Keely, you just bought this thrifting and you wore it a couple times and then you sold it. I think that kind of is my mindset a lot when thrifting, but with luxury fashion, not so much. I do always have in the back of my mind before I buy something though, like, is this something that I could get at least a good chunk of my money back if I decide I don't like it anymore or just if I want to sell it basically. I think that's a really good mindset to have especially tying like minimalism kind of into things. I personally get like a bit antsy when I have a lot of things especially just because I want to have the ability to pick up and move very easily. I don't know if I will always be like that Probably not so much when I'm older, but I feel like when I'm young, I find it a bit stressful to have a lot of things. My friend Ava actually has a really good video about when luxury goods are an investment, and she mainly talks about bags and Chanel bags, for example. So if you're interested in that, I'll have it linked down below. But there definitely are some pieces that will hold their value and some that won't, and shoes rarely hold their value, but I think when you don't have a lot of money or when you're younger, having the resale market in mind when you are purchasing expensive items is always a good idea. <laughs> I don't know where to start. I guess I would start with the first pair of designer shoes that I bought and really really loved and still wear all the time. These have gotten repaired before. I think it's really important that you take your shoes to a cobbler and get them resold when necessary. I think I will have to do that again soon. I love adding like a chunkier height to shoes. I feel like they just always look so much better. These are the Balenciaga Sontour boots. I know I just butchered that. My French is not the best, even though I've taken it in school and tried to learn on Duolingo. Pronunciation just isn't my strong suit. But these are the iconic Balenciaga boots. So many people have these. And I think for good reason. I think they're very fitting for those that have edgier styles. And I'm always like a bit taken aback when I see very preppy girls wearing them, but I guess they're kind of the it shoe. Or used to be, not so much anymore, but now they produce them in so many different colorways. These particular ones are a bit rare, so they have higher value than the ones that have the silver and the gold hardware. The silver and gunmetal is a bit hard to come by. And they have increased the price of them by around $200 since I purchased them new, so I think I could actually get a good chunk of my money back if I sold these, even though they've been totally beaten up. They're definitely one of the best purchases I've ever made. I go through phases where I wear these like every single day. I've had some questions from you guys. I know a lot of you guys have purchased them off sites like The Real Real from my links. I get little alerts when you guys do that. The Real Real has also upped their price on them, so I guess they're going up in value. But you used to be able to get a pair for like $400 on the real real and don't quote me on this but now I think they go for like seven 
to $900 used. These are a bit difficult to break in. I probably should have buckled these up to show you guys, but I'm sure you've seen them quite a lot. They've definitely really shaped to my foot. They have some pretty intense creasing in them, but if you have these, I definitely recommend taking them to a cobbler and getting the wooden heel reinforced and just maybe adding some height onto them. It's only like $40 for me to do and so worth it. I'm gonna do a more fun pair next. So these are my Prada horror movie-esque loafers. Avery purchased these for me for Christmas this year. They're the only loafer I own at this time. I don't think I own a more fun pair of shoes. But with that being said, I think the other fun shoes I own won't last in the sense that I will always love them or they won't like stay in style but these I feel like are really cool almost collector's piece especially because I feel like Prada is definitely starting to gain some more traction I would love to add some more hype onto them as well so maybe I'll do that a shoe that I actually am still looking for is a good derby a shoe brand that's on my wish list is Marcel, which I feel like a lot of people don't know about, don't care about, but Marcel is a really cool shoe brand, but everything they make is absolutely beautiful. And I also am really wanting a pair of sandals from them. I feel like I'm always covering up my toes. I used to do ballet, so my feet are still a bit rough looking. <laughs> They've healed quite a lot. I just don't like to show my toes. But Marcel has this beautiful pair of very thick platformed leather sandals. I may get some for myself this summer. Next we have my Rick Owens sock boots. I actually caught these on sale from Essence. Essence always does their massive end of season sales. And I think I got these for around 1k but the retail was close to 2k on them. So I definitely saved some money there. There actually is a vegan leather pair from Rick Owens Diffusion line, Dark Shadow, that's great. I don't think they sell this particular pair anymore, but these are very, very well loved, quite a bit scuffed up. I like them better that way. I used to wear them where you could see that they come up over my knee, but I rarely do that anymore. I love how they've shaped my foot. They give a really nice like wrinkled effect under trousers, and these are a total go-to in the winter because they keep your legs warm under your pants. This is another shoe purchase that I don't see myself ever giving up. I've had to clear some things off my memory card because I ran out of storage. So my apologies if anything has moved around a bit, but I wanted to get into a pair of shoes that I actually am considering offing. They were a gift from Avery as well, and he agrees with me, so it's not the end of the world. My JW Anderson Cylinder Ballet heels, and I have worn these quite a lot as well, but I feel like they just don't suit my style as much as they used to. And I haven't found myself reaching for them for a little bit. I don't really see myself taking them with me when I move. So I think it's time. I loved them while I did. Wore them in Paris on my birthday last year. They have a lot of good memories behind them, but I don't think that's a good enough excuse to hold on to things. So they are a crocodile heel with this silver metal cylinder as the heel. A lot of people are like, how do you walk in those? It's flat on the bottom. This is a pair of shoes I was thinking about when I was talking about how some of my more like fun loving shoes might not withstand time as much as the Prada loafer as well. But if anybody that's watching this is interested in these, definitely shoot me a DM on Instagram. I'm doing a little collaboration with Heroin soon, which is Grailed Sister site. It's a really great site for reselling your designer pieces or shopping for secondhand designer pieces. I love them. More fun loving shoes. So this is a sneaker that is from the Swedish brand Ateez. This is the shoe of our generation. I feel like it's the shoe of this decade, kind of. The platform sneaker. So this is the 80s Angel sneaker. They recently gifted these to me, which I'm so thankful for. So this is their new pair that has the canvas upper. I know these sell out pretty quickly, but I'll try to have all of these shoes linked down below, whether it's through secondhand sellers or new. They're very heavy duty, actually heavy sneakers. And I think they really fill a hole 
in my collection for a statement sticker. I'm pretty stuck on wearing my Air Force Ones all the time, but I feel like I'd like to venture away from those and wear a silhouette that's a bit more interesting. So these have been very, very fun. They also have like an all black leather pair, like a tan suede pair. You've probably seen them on a lot of bloggers. After you break them in, they're very comfortable as well. And last, but certainly not least, is my newest shoe purchase for myself. I bought these when I was in London from the Margello store. When you are shopping abroad, take advantage of any tax-free programs you can because you can get things for so much cheaper. I got these for like two to three hundred dollars cheaper than I would have purchased them new in the US. That was quite a steal for me. I couldn't really pass them up. And these are the Margella Tabby Pumps. My boyfriend Avery has a really great video all about the history of Tabbies if you're interested in checking that out. They're an iconic shoe. I was really wanting a vintage pair of the Tabby boots, but they go for 3 or 4k and I just can't justify that at this time. Also, as you may have noticed, I don't have a single pump or heel in my shoe collection, so they really filled a hole there. And I'm sure I'll be adding more tabbies to my collection eventually, <laughs> but hopefully a vintage pair. So that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you're interested in checking out any of these styles, like I said, I will have them linked below. And I will see you soon with a new video. Bye.